Welcome back to our IB Biology video series. This is the first video in IB Biology Topic 2, Molecular Biology, where we will be looking at molecules and water. As those of you who are taking IB Chemistry will know, a molecule is a group of two or more atoms held together by covalent bonds. Between these molecules, there are intermolecular forces which hold the molecules near one another. Molecular biology is the study of living processes in terms of the chemical processes involved. The main element involved in such chemical processes is carbon. Carbon forms the base of all organic matter, so living organisms are considered carbon-based. Other important elements include nitrogen, oxygen and hydrogen. The main molecules that form from the elements are carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. These four organic molecules are produced via various chemical processes that occur within organisms. They can either be cyclical reactions or chain reactions, meaning that they occur in cycles or one after the other, respectively. These chemical processes are collectively known as metabolism. Metabolism can therefore be defined as the complex web of all enzyme-catalyzed reactions in an organism. Within metabolism, there are generally two sizes of molecules, monomers and macromolecules. Monomers are small molecules, whereas macromolecules are larger molecules created via two reactions, anabolic and catabolic. Anabolic reactions bind together multiple monomers to form macromolecules. They are generally condensation reactions, i.e. they produce water. Catabolic reactions break apart macromolecules to form multiple monomers. They are generally hydration reactions, i.e. they require water. So, water is involved in metabolism, but exactly what does the IB expect you to know about water? Water is composed of two hydrogen atoms bonded to a single oxygen atom. The electrons within these covalent bonds are unequally distributed, causing the oxygen atom to be slightly more negatively charged compared to the hydrogen atoms. This means that water has a negative and positive pole, which means it is termed a polar molecule. In molecular biology, there are many different types of polar molecules, and, rather like bar magnets, these polar molecules will attract one another. Therefore, Two important terms arise in this context, hydrophilic and hydrophobic. Hydrophilic is a molecule which is polar and thus attracted to water. Hydrophobic is a molecule which is nonpolar and thus not attracted to water. Water, since it is polar, is hydrophilic and so it is attracted to itself. This occurs due to the existence of hydrogen bonds between water molecules. A hydrogen bond is the strongest intermolecular force, and it occurs between a positive hydrogen atom and a negative nitrogen, oxygen or fluorine atom. The existence of hydrogen bonds between molecules of water gives rise to several key properties that you need to be aware of. Let's look at them now. Water is cohesive. This describes the phenomenon by which water molecules stick to one another due to hydrogen bonds. An example would be the cohesion of water molecules to form a continuous stream in the xylem. Water is adhesive. This describes the phenomenon by which water molecules stick to other hydrophilic substances. An example would be the adhesion of water molecules to the walls of the xylem. Water has a high specific heat capacity. This means that it takes a lot of energy to heat up water. A principal use of this is water forming the base for most internal environments, facilitating stable internal conditions. Water has a high latent heat of vaporization. This means it takes a lot of energy to vaporize water. A principal use of this is water in the form of sweat, which evaporates and removes lots of energy, i.e. heat, in the process. Water is a universal solvent. This means that water can dissolve many hydrophilic solutes. 
An example is how water carries sodium, chlorine, glucose and amino acids in the blood. It is worth noting that other hydrophobic components of blood, such as oxygen, cholesterol and lipids, are transported using specific carriers. Quite commonly in the IB biology exam, you can be expected to contrast water's thermal properties with regards to a hydrophobic molecule, such as methane. Water melts at 0 degrees, boils at 100 degrees, has a latent heat of vaporization of 2.26, and a specific heat capacity of 4.2. Methane does not contain hydrogen bonds, and so the intermolecular forces between the molecules of methane are weaker. It therefore takes less energy to break these bonds, and so methane melts and boils at lower temperatures of minus 182 and minus 160 degrees respectively. By the same logic, it takes less energy to evaporate and heat methane, so both the latent heat of vaporization and specific heat capacity are lower. You do not need to worry about remembering the exact figures for these two comparisons. However, you should be comfortable explaining the reasons for the differences that arise. We hope you enjoyed the first video in our IB Biology Topic 2 video series. Check out our notes, flashcards and questions on our website to reinforce your understanding from this video.